Merry Christmas Eve Eve. Welcome to our candlelight Christmas service for Long Creek and Dalton City United Methodist Churches. I'm Pastor Haley Hausman. Thank you so much for joining us in this special service where we will have a little fun this evening, maybe sing some songs together, and also celebrate Holy Communion and celebrate the birth of Jesus, which that is the whole reason for this season. So thanks for joining in with us this evening. Just a couple of reminders before we begin this evening. Tomorrow night at six o'clock on Christmas Eve, head outside, grab your jingle bells and ring those bells at six o'clock um, as a reminder to your friends and neighbors and other Christians that may live near you that Christ has come. So at six o'clock tomorrow night, we will ring our bells. You might also wanna bring a candle out, a candlelight out with you and you may also sing in Silent Night. That's tomorrow night at 6. This evening during our service, you may also want to grab a candle or your cell phone to use as a candle toward the end. We normally light candles um, and share the light of Christ with one another. This evening we'll be doing it virtually, so you might want to have your own candle nearby that you can light or turn on. As we celebrate Holy Communion, some of you received prepackaged elements um, through Long Creek or Dalton City. If you did not receive these, you're welcome to use whatever elements you have at home or whatever can serve as elements at home. Crackers, juice, bread, water, whatever you have available will work this evening. So join me as we prepare our hearts and enter into worship for this candlelight Christmas service. Rejoice, for God is with us, Emmanuel. In the darkness of our world shines God's holy light. Now there is a reason to hope, to love, to laugh, to live. God is truly with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing, O Come, All Ye Faithful, as the music plays. Special thanks to Katie Tippett and the United Methodist Virtual Choir, and maybe even a note or two by me this evening for helping us through our worship this evening. Um, join in, sing the songs as the words appear on your screen. You can also just listen, um, but tune your heart to the Lord and join in singing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Let us pray. Gracious God, with joy and thanksgiving, we gather virtually as your people. We have come to hear again the timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of this night and day, quiet our hearts, that we may know the peace and fullness of this holy time. Shine, O light, in the darkness of our world. Sing, O angels, in the stillness of our hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those whom God favors. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen. This evening we will journey through the Christmas story, through the readings found in the Old Testament and the New Testament as well. Um, feel free to turn in your Bible and follow along or just listen this evening as we experience and re-experience the telling of Christ's birth. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed these words in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called 
wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, 4 and 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The coming of Jesus is announced to Mary and Joseph. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The Preparations for the Birth of Jesus from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child.
Jesus is born. Luke 2, 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Jesus' birth is announced to the shepherds in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 9 through 14. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The shepherds find the baby Jesus from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 through 18. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them.
The wise men bring their gifts to Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Will you join me in a prayer of confession and pardon? Merciful God, we confess that often we find darkness more comfortable than light. We confess that we find your good news frightening and unsettling, especially when we consider its demands as well as its promises. We confess that Christmas has become more to us than the birthday of Christ partly because we do not want a Christ child in our lives or in our world. Forgive us, break us, bend us, remake us. Give us courage to lay ourselves open to the wonder and healing of your coming. Be born again into our world and be born again into our hearts and lives. Hear now our silent and personal confessions as we prepare ourselves for your nativity. The true light that enlightens all has come into the world. That light shines on in the darkness and the darkness has never been able to put it out. This is the good news. God has heard our confession. God has forgiven our sins. Thanks be to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, which was broken for you. And the blood of Christ, which was poured out for you because Jesus loved you, God loved you that much. Come and feast at his heavenly banquet table. Let's pray. We are filled with joy, for we have heard good news of great joy. We are filled with love, for we have tasted the sign of God's great love. We are filled with hope for the angels still sing in our world, and there is a light for us to follow. God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which we partake. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Um, Partake in your communion elements, then join in grabbing a light, and join in singing together. Silent night. Let's celebrate.
Thank you for joining us for our Christmas candlelight service. Let the light of Christ shine in you and through you. May you go out and share God's love and light with the world. Enjoy this special video of nativity and tree and other random Christmas pictures from our church families. May you all have a very blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you for joining us for our Christmas candlelight service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.